two months in. I'm still struggling every day, but I'm motivated by my daughter. I caught my wife in an affair two months ago. We had been together nine years. Married for five. In 28 now, so we met rather young and did a lot of learning and growing together. She always had guy friends that she would talk to. So when she mentioned that she was catching up with someone from her past, I didn't think too much of it. Honestly, I should have taken that as a red flag throughout the years, but me being a chill guy and not the jealous type, I didn't make a big deal out of it. We had been struggling in our marriage for the past two years now. I've made a lot of mistakes. Not cheating, just many moments where I could have been a better partner. She also has made a lot of mistakes in that sense. Yet I had been trying to save the marriage, constantly trying to do things to fix our problems, and always asking her if she wanted to talk with that goal in mind. She didn't want to try. She asked for a divorce and kept telling me our relationship is over. I asked her what her plan was. She said she will start making plans and let me know. Which she never did. She was comfortable with me, supporting her, and trying to help her with her mental health problems. She's bipolar and has depression. For the last two years, it's been a big part of her life. In December 2020, her dad and I had to take her to a behavioral hospital for the whole month because she became manic. Once she got out, she was on medication, and it was obvious she wasn't the same person that she was before. I figured her wanting to split was due to her mental health. So it became another reason I took it easy on her, with her talking to all sorts of people and going places without me and hanging with, I don't know. I loved her and didn't want to stress her out or make the situation worse by getting on to her all the time. It just led to arguments. She would tell me she needs to live her life that way for her happiness. We have a five-year-old daughter. She loves her daughter, but she wasn't focused on being a mother and wife. I was the one pushing for our family to stay together and find happiness in that sense. About two months ago, she didn't come home at night. She had been doing that for some time now, and would tell me she was spending the night at a friend's house. That's when I started to get really suspicious. She walked in the next morning and I asked if there was something that I need to know. She said no and went to bed. For the first time in two years, she left her phone open and I told myself, it's now or never. I took the phone and walked out the house and started going through it. I found the guy's number, called him. No answer. Then I saw the messages proof that they had been intimate. I was shattered, but I kept my composure, went back into the house and confronted her. She was like a deer in the headlights. I kicked her out that very moment. Now, she's pregnant with the guy. I'm positive it's not mine. We were last intimate in February, and apparently they first hooked up in March. Now my goal is to try to gain custody of my daughter and divorce her. The guy is a felon. I don't know what kind of lifestyle they plan on living, but I definitely don't want my daughter around people that make those types of decisions. I'm motivated by making sure my daughter is in a good place, and to make sure that she knows that she is one parent at least trying their very best for her future. I struggle every day still. But I have a good support group, my family, my friends. Even her dad and some of her family say they are on my side. Everyone sees that what she did was completely selfish. It doesn't make a good image for her or the family in any way. I think a lot about things that I could have done better, but I realize it wasn't my fault. I tried my best to save my marriage. It was her decision. The week that I caught her, I found this subreddit. It helped me tremendously, and I felt like it was time for me to share my story. It motivated me to hit the gym, as well as concentrating on productive activities to distract myself from all the overthinking and to better myself from my future and my daughter's future. Thank you all for your time. Redditor's reaction story, two after. Redditor one. I am sorry to hear that you are going through this. Focus on making sure you are liared up to protect yourself and your daughter. Then be the best dad you can be. Redditor two. Just keep moving forward. I've had several family members married to bipolar spouses. Very few lasted. Those that do, the spouse with BP is very active with their care. Medicine. Therapy. When they feel something's off, they tell the spouse then make the appropriate doctor calls. Those that don't, well, 
they pretty much follow the path your STBXW is taking. I will tell you, don't wait. Do what's best for your child. If that means getting the law and a lawyer involved, don't wait. The sooner you get your daughter into a stable environment, the better she'll recover from the asset show. Don't be afraid to play hardball with her mental issues in the court. You want your kid playing in a drug den? Want the APA other friends dropping by with their dubious backgrounds? Document everything. Listen to your lawyer. She's made her decision and picked a felon and her happiness over yours and the safety of your daughter. Stop answer. Thank you for that. It's the first time I'm hearing from someone else's experience with bipolar people in relationships. She wasn't active in her treatment. If it didn't happen now, I'm sure it would have happened eventually. Redditor 3. In many places, you're automatically on the birth certificate if your wife has a baby. See a lawyer now. Op answer, I was told something similar. Yeah, I'll definitely have to crank out a paternity test. Thank you. 2. Contacting a fair partner in disguise. I found out that my wife of 17 years was cheating on me for over three years with a co-worker. She no longer works with him, but they kept in touch. This happened all while what appeared to be a happy place in our marriage, great conversations, traveling, intimacy, jokes. Fun. I agree that it wasn't always peachy. But what marriage doesn't have good days and bad days? This is soul-crushing. That's the revelation. She has downplayed the affair at every turn. We had S time twice, but I stopped him. We didn't even talk or see each other often, etc. Meanwhile, I'm finding countless text messages and calls, gifts she sent him, money she gave him, and messages where she expressed love for him. I have limited interest in trying to reconcile. We have young children and have built a life, but the trust is broken. She swears she's answered all questions honestly, but I don't believe her. Out of desperation, I created a social media profile and the AP thinks it's my wife. I didn't use her name or likeness, but he's an idiot, so he's assuming. I'm tempted to strike up conversations to dig for the truth. I have deal breakers questions, and if he confessed to them, I can move on from my marriage and heal. I know this is an odd approach. What say you? Should I do this? Would you? Redditor's reaction story three after. Redditor one, you are pain shopping. Is there anything you could discover that will make you suddenly trust her more or hurt less? You know she disrespected you, betrayed you, chose someone else over you. Details won't take any of that away. Redditor 2. Op. First of all, I am so sorry that you are facing this horrific betrayal. The knowledge that your wife is an adulterous traitor to you, your marriage, and your family is catastrophic, painful, and incredibly stressful. If you look up the home's race dress scale, it's right up there with the death of a spoy's U.S. distress-related emotional impact. Let that sink in. She is clearly rug sweeping, which is another slap in your face and an indication that she's nowhere near remorse. So where to go from here? My advice is the following. Drop your plan to contact OP. This is misplaced effort. The PS deserves zero time and attention from you. You didn't exchange vows and rings with him. It's all on your cheating wife. Go hard 180 on her. This is not punishment. This is for you to reclaim your sense of self apart from her and get into a good, healthy headspace. During this time, focus on your health, nutrition, hydration, exercise, hit the gym, get therapy for the trauma you needed, badly as did I. See an attorney pronto. Whether or not you decide to file, you need to know what your legal options are. If after some time thief ship of you mind SND emotions are righted, you decide that the pain and stress are too much, then go ahead and file. Have her served and move forward with separation and divorce. Honestly, your marriage is over in truth. The D is just adding the legal stamp to it. If, however, you decide to test the waters and see if she material for reconciliation, then demand that your wife go completely no contact with this a whole column that to her face, and that she needs to send a text and email to him to that effect 
with your full knowledge as to content and that he'd be deleted and blocked on all platforms, phone, email, social media, etc. Tell her you'll be monitoring and if you find out she has broken NC, you're out. You both need to be tested for STDs immediately and she has to show you the results. Stop all intimacy, BTW. No test, no moving forward, and you divorce. Individual counseling for both of you. No marriage counseling for a long while. She must give you complete access to all devices, accounts, etc. All of them. Tell her if she has any hidden egg bounce or burner phone. She has one chance to reveal them, and if you find out later, you're out. She needs to read how to help your spouse heal from your affair, and that you expect her to put into practice what is contained in that book. If you see her slacking, you're out. If she does the above, maybe look into marriage counseling six, nine months down the road. If the P.S. is married or hasn't, so inform them immediately. That have as much a right to know as you. Listen, three years is a god-awful amount of time to be involved in active betrayal and may be insurmountable. I think it would be for me. However, there are couples that have successfully recovered from LTAs. Not many, but some. You take all the time you need to decide what you want need, and she needs to do the heavy lifting to help you heal. Once again, I am so sorry you're facing this. Being married to a traitor to the marital cause is a terrible thing to deal with. Yet here you are. Take control. No dissimulation, gaslighting, or blame shifting. No more lies, no more rug sweeping. She finally faces herself, owns her, shh, T, or you're out. Strength, clarity, and healing to you, sir. Story three, and here I thought it would never happen to me. Me, M52, WW, Fefuas, together for 22 Yates. Married 20. Three kids, two young adults, one seven years dot, O. Oh. Five years ago, the WW had a late life epiphany. S time was good and enjoyable. We went from one to two times a month to daily and sometimes, if time and responsibilities allowed, twice in the same day. The activities included seductive nude sentiment phone or email and cutesy stuff, hearts and smillies reminiscent of our earlier days and the relationship before kids. Somewhere in this time. Deck January 2018 talks about spicing up the bedroom by bringing another person in the mix. First red flag, it was a guy friend from our cohort that the WW suggested. Nope it hard with the simple reason of not my cup of tea to be naked in the same bed with another guy and my spouse. It got dropped then, but articles about poly and open relationships were being dropped on my inbox or links on the phone. I would read them and vary from non-committal to not interested. A week before Thanksgiving 2018, we're out on a date and the talk about including a third comes up. I ask if this hypothetical third has a name. It's a close friend with whom we spend a lot of time together, etc., and with whom the WW has spoken about this idea with already. Pay for the drinks, get in the car, and proceed to flip my lid. One, I never agreed to this. Two, for any such conversation I should have been present and not told after it was decided. Three, duck no, literally. Holidays sucked for all, but it was one of the best weight loss programs for all adults in the house. Around February 2019, we get our asset together to talk it through. She's repentant and remorseful, admits poor judgment, and understands why I'm not okay about the deceit, as well as the whole idea. She got it. S. Time life took a hit. We managed to find a new pace. At least once a week, but the spark and lust were subdued. After this year, apparent that I had a difficult relationship passed unexpectedly. I was there for a plan four days. Stayed for 45 in a funeral. My begeg started resurfacing. Especially some of the treatments that I experienced of being the safe one, the second choicey as in starting to deal with this crap milkshakey of the soul, WW starts to be withdrawn, always on electronics, limited conversation, and only about the basics. Duck, I'm at a place to deal with my loss. And now this. Okay, 
I get on her machine after midnight when the house is all quiet and to reach nothing in recent email or on FB and on phone messages. There's activity but nothing that points to coded or otherwise hidden messages. I check the time frames of 2017-2018. Bingo. I find sent emails to the friend from her with the same spicy pictures I was getting at the same time. FB Messenger for the same period is full of good mornings, smelly faces, hearts, and flirting between them. Video chats from 5 to 15 minutes. WW was starting a business, and friend would stop by for coffee or lunch daily as he could. At the time, he was there to help and advice. Flip of Lid, Part 2, The Idiot Awakens got the 20K volts coursing through me all night. Could not sleep, sit, just paced. At 6 a.m., WW wakes and asks what's wrong. I open the laptop lid and show her the highlighted emails with her naked pics to the friend's email. No inbox, just sent files. I asked how would she react if she found out I had pictures of a naked woman on my machine and that they were of a time period covering at least 10 months prior to what I said was a silly mistake. I pointed out that she did lie. She did have at least an emotional affair with the now verified AP, and it was deliberate, which was lost in any statement from her at this point, would be suspect to its truth. The first apologies of the WW ended in the trash can as she started to vomit. I asked why she did not tell me of this four years ago. We would have dealt with this already. I told her, I'm taking the day to think about it and sharing, because it can happen to anyone. None of us are special, and here I thought it would never happen to me. Update, today is day of firsts. The outpouring of support and trauma shared is staggering. I find myself glad and sorry that I'm not alone in my experiences. Thank you to all for the advice, comments, and suggestions from readings to step-by-step -step playthroughs. I have replied to individuals, but it's worth updating all and clarifying some points before the update. She did have a miscarriage that was a bloody affair that we rushed to the ER for. With her soaked in her own blood, it was verified as such by the trauma staff and Abgen at the hospital. It was early first trimester. No way to tell who the father was. This was early 2018. Got snipped shortly after. S. Time Life was still on the red hot stage of things. I have heard from several of you that the DNA test route is a good idea. It's yet another truth that has been challenged today. A fair partner is single, has been divorced for at least as long as we were married. Racially, we're European stock, he's mostly African American and Native American. He's very well spoken, charming, and educated. W.S. was engaged in minority community outreach and education for years, as was A.P. W.S. nascent business was with an actual storefront. Sure, there were spaces that two adults could be intimate in. If Teresa will, Teresa way. AP runs his own consultancy and makes his own hours. Flexible schedule and has small business experience, offered to help with the startup and was an advisor. One legitimate reasons to be there plus time. Business was started in the fall of 2015. Storefront opened in winter of 2016. Closed shop, spring of 2019. Good idea, bad execution. In retrospect, WS had her mind and focus elsewhere. And yes, the more I reread this text, the more of a calamity this man was for us. After spending the day in disbelief, anger and air and voltage running through me, I came home. My insides are playing death metal, while outwardly I whistle easy listening tunes. WS is on the couch, collapsed and on herself. She tried to get up to greet me, and just I pointed my hands at her. She sits. I grab the chair as far from the couch as I can. I inform her that him with one foot out the door. I will decide which direction I move in the relationship based on what she does next. I tell her that since she's the mother of the kids, and out of respect for our time together, I will endeavor to keep nastiness on my part, to a minimum. I remind her it's more fair than she deserves, and it's because of my self-respect not her actions. Because of her ducked-up upbringing and the abandonment she experienced, I tell her not to be afraid of me disappearing. I tell her that if leave, she will be explicitly told. 
I also let her know that her presence in the house is at my discretion at this point. She has luggage and can be told to leave if at any point she disrespects me or tries to lie. We discuss how to tell the kids. She wants to tell them it's the fight from 2018. I remind her how one of the then-teens stopped speaking to her and how she would be a pariah once again in-house. She starts crying, and I remind her she did this. I will talk to the kids with her there. She shook her head and cried. In return, to begin with, start with a no-contact letter to AP. Start the timeline on paper. Anything not true, we're done right there. A list of passwords to accounts, bank, and plastic records. She gets the couch. I will let her know what next. Before I leave the room, ask her who is she. She has become a stranger. Redditor's reactions. Redditor 1. You're about to be trickle-truthed into oblivion. Just an FYI for you, man. She is going to lie, omit, and obfuscate, because that's what they always do. My advice is to take time for yourself and decide what you really want to do. Stop answer. Yeah, I know, but the cat's out. Really don't care of the color at this point or how big or small it is. Redditor 2. You have a seven-year-old, and this took place about five years ago? If it were me, I would be questioning that. Affairs are icebergs. You only see the tip. Op answer. Kid and I are the same blood type. WW and OP are different and very unique. The miscarriage that happened in that time frame is suspicious, though. Redditor 3. Pretty sure it was PA also. Redditor follow up, and it may have included the T-rasm she wanted, but the husband wasn't involved. If it's one thing I'm sick and tired of seeing, it's the spouse who requests opening the marriage or starts pushing Polly because they're already in the midst of an affair. It's becoming a meme. It's so common. Redditor 4. You and I have so much in common that I can't help but feel this sickness and pain with you. I'm sorry, but I don't have any sagacious advice that could help anything. If she's like my wife, she's trickle-truthing and will never come clean. If you still feel you could burn it all down and start over, now's the time. I didn't, because it was long ago, and the kids were still small. You must know if you're going to take having a wife that you clearly shouldn't trust. Op answer, yeah. The whole awakening and going from a commodose bedroom to a hot one did not sit right at the time. As I mentioned, I have proof of the lying. What she decides to do is now tainted by that. I'm sorry that you too had this experience. It's experience. It's experience.